Okay, hi there. Thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to be working on the design for the three-quarter scale Les Paul for my dog. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is I am going to put a feta fish on this. I think I, I mentioned this before. And I want the tail to go up from this little horn right here and come around and have the face down here where it won't really be obstructed by anything and uh, it'll be a, a nice little focal point. Um, my daughter's first pet was a betta fish and her name was Bella, except she wasn't a she at all. She was a he. She was a very pretty he. Um, that was kind of hard to explain to my daughter. Um, I had to wait a couple of years until after the fish died. Anyway, so I got some, uh, I got some footage of actually drawing out the design for this um, and then uh, I'm going to show that, show some pictures and then we'll talk about further plans. Okay, so here what I am about to do is use some tape to attach some tracing paper to the front of the guitar and I'm going to use some sidewalk chalk to make a rubbing and get all the details and the edges and you know where the pickup cavities are so that I can work around those in my design. Then I come through and darken things up with a pencil a little bit so I can see them better. So here I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight into my rendering process. I like to use three different colors on one different scale. Uh, one light one, one medium one, one dark one to actually go through and figure out the details and then a final black pen to go over the finalized design but yeah I go through and I rough things out with the lightest color just really really basic shapes like circles and rectangles and triangles and stuff and then I come through with the next color and I kind of define those shapes a little more into you know, what I'm trying to make them look like and then after that I'll come through with the third color and refine things even further before putting down final lines. So this method isn't perfect. It shows your construction lines and that's not usually something you want visible on a final product, but for the design process it works pretty good. I used to use this method a lot when I worked at the tattoo shop sit down and have a 10 or 15 minute conversation with somebody while I was drawing their design right in front of them. Um, it's kind of funny to see people's reactions through the process. I mean, when you start out, it looks like an ugly, ugly mess. But by the end of it, they finally get the idea of what you're going for. And you know, usually they kind of respect the fact that you could draw it right in front of them. I think this is my favorite part for two reasons. First reason is you can hear me and my wife talking back and forth in high speed. We sound like chipmunks, it's freaking adorable. Secondly, this part is where I come in with the, you know, the, the I have a pit pen right now and uh, come in and actually finalize some of the line work and it really starts to come together at this point. And it's usually the most exciting part.
So for this clip, I actually flipped the picture upside down so you guys could see what I'm doing. And uh, this is actually real time. This isn't sped up at all. Just to kind of give you guys an idea of you know, what, what the real time frame looks like on drawing something. So yeah, that is how you draw a fish. Um, there is one thing about drawing, um, and it's a very popular saying, but when you mess up and you don't like what you got, you gotta go back to the drawing board. All right, all right, all right. So I have a new design drawn up. I'm not gonna show you quite yet. I'll, I'll show you at the end of the video, but I have a new design drawn up and I need to transfer the design from my paper to the wood. And uh, there's a couple ways to do this for the sake of uh, time on this project. I'm just going to use carbon paper and uh, you know, and then I'll just work around that I plan to paint most of the guitar anyway, so uh, you know, making marks and stuff like that isn't going to be a big deal because I'll be painting over it anyway. Um, there's a lot of stuff that has to go on before the finished product. So this way, if I do it this way, I get to keep this paper. I don't have to cut it up, and uh, I can reapply it when I'm actually ready to go on and paint all the graphics on there. I have some other things I'm wanting to do that uh, you'll find out in, in the next video. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna use carbon paper. And it's not special carbon paper, it's just regular carbon paper that I bought at the uh, craft store for real cheap. It's in the drawing section. And uh, I have a piece of tape here. Um, and I'm just going to tape my paper to the top of the guitar here. I already have lines for the outside edge of the guitar and everything, so I don't need to I don't need to worry about having multiple pieces of tape holding it in place to make sure it doesn't veer off in this direction or the next because I have I have reference to line it up. And the last thing I'm going to need, other than a tissue to wipe all the sweat off me, is a ballpoint pen. Now you can do this with a pencil, um, but a ballpoint pen gets you a cleaner line, and uh, it's, it's just it's a one pass thing. You don't need to kind of scrape it in. So. I, I like using a ballpoint pen. Um, if this were like a, if this were like a special, like something more special, like I, I didn't want to get ink on, on the paper or anything like that, you can just use a, an empty ballpoint pen and it works just the same as long as the ball is rolled. Anyway, so I got my carbon paper and I'm just gonna kind of throw it underneath my design here and just start tracing it on. I'm gonna make sure that all my lines are on the edge of the guitar where I want them to be. And I'm gonna watch out for the pickup cavities because those are a problem. And you just trace over your design. It is as simple as that. So since it's so simple, of course it's gonna take forever. So I am going to speed things up right now. Okay, so now I have everything I really need on there for the moment. 
it's not on there super dark, it's just kind of kind of a faint outline. So I'm going to go over with my carpenter's pencil and just kind of darken things up a little bit so it's a little easier to see. Um, I need it to last at least through like a little bit of woodwork. Um, so I'm going to darken things up a little bit. So that is the design process for this piece pretty much completed as far as like mapping out where all the painting is going to go and um, I, have, I have some cut marks on here that uh, they're going to look pretty obscure to you right now but after I go in there and uh, really hog out some material it'll, it'll really come into fruition but here what I have. I don't know if you can see that real well. I am going to take another video close up and uh, really give you an idea of what you're looking at here. So, before that clip, I am going to go ahead and say goodnight. Um, it's not early right now. Uh, <laughs> Got to do my stuff during the day. Anyway, Thanks for watching the video up to this point. If you liked it, go ahead and smash that like button. If you want to see more content from me about my builds in the year of the guitar, uh, go ahead and subscribe. This is my first video that is completely um, independent of the Great Guitar Build-Off. This has nothing to do with the Great Guitar Build-Off. I'm not going to be you know, writing it in the description at all. Like If you are finding this video, you know, it's, it's because it's because you're looking for what I'm doing, not what other people are doing. And that's kind of exciting. I hope it does well. But anyway, if you like it and you want to see more, some more of my stuff, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification button. Um, all that good YouTube stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep making them if you keep watching them. Alright, thanks. Take care.